Hi guys, Dr. Cruz. Here's a short video on percentiles and quartiles. Uh, percentiles is simply how many did you beat out of 100, all right? If there's 100 people in the room uh, racing or taking a test, uh, it doesn't really matter what your time was in the race or what your score was on the test. What matters is how many did you beat. So if there's 100 people in a race, and you guys race, and at the end of the race, you are the first one who finishes. That means you beat 99 of those 100 racers. That means you're in the 99th percentile, all right? And if you take a test, it doesn't matter what score you made on the test, but if you beat, let's say you made a horrible score on the test, like a 45%, which sounds terrible, but if you beat everybody in the room, then you're in the 99th percentile. So the raw data, the raw time of your race, or the raw score of your test doesn't matter. When you're speaking percentiles, you're speaking about how many did you beat out of 100. Percent means per 100. Percent out of 100. How many did you beat out of 100? So for example, look at the uh, ACT scores that I've lined up down here. An average ACT score out of all the high school seniors and juniors who took the ACT the average score is about 20. And remember, average is the mean, that's the high point of the curve, goes in the middle. So the average is 20, and the standard deviation is five. So give or take five points either way. If I subtract five, I got 15. If I add five, I got 25, all right? This is totally normal. ACT is from 15 to 25. That's one standard deviation either way. This is 68% of the people in the room. That'd be 68 out of 100 people land in here. Now there's still 32 people out there, so split them in half, that's about 16 over here and 16 over here. 16 scored kind of low and 16 scored kind of high, but everything's still pretty normal until you get out here to where, you know, the outliers live. The outliers are a little bit unusual, but that average score of 20, that score right in the middle, that would be the 50th percentile. That means if you're right in the middle, you know, basically 50 people are below you and 50 people are above you, basically, all right? If you beat 50 people, that means you're the 51st person. That means you belong over here on the right side, those 50. So 50 below and 50 above, and you're the 51st person. If you're in the 50th percentile, you beat 50 people, and you're the 50th person. I do want to make a note about the Z-scores here. When we draw the curve, the first thing we do is we break it into three sections to the right and three sections to the left. These steps to the right and steps to the left, those are your standard deviations. Now just a uh, standard deviation score we call Z. We just label the middle, the mean, as zero. And then we speak one, two, three standard deviations to the right and negative one, negative two, negative three standard deviations to the left. So if we're using these 0, 1, 2, 3 numbers, we're speaking in, you know, I call it Z language. We're speaking Z. And if we're speaking with the raw data, like the ACT scores of 10, 15, 20, 25, those scores down there, that's the raw data. We call those X, all right? So your 0, 1, 2, 3 numbers, those are Z numbers. And your raw data, whatever goes with the story that you're talking about or the measurements that you took, that raw data is called X. Okay, next I want to talk about uh, quartiles, and it's probably easiest if we think about a basketball game. A basketball game has four quarters, so there's end of the first quarter, end of the second quarter, that's halftime, end of the third quarter, and end of the fourth quarter. So it's broken into four parts. If we take data, you know, any set of values that we're measuring, we can break that data into four parts. We can start with the lowest value in our data set and go all the way up to the highest data value in our data set, the max, and everything in between, we can split that into four pieces, into four quarters, into four quartiles, all right? This is the first quartile, this is the second quartile, third quartile, and fourth quartile. So the first quartile ends right here, that's like the end of the first quarter in basketball, and the second quartile ends right here, that's the end of the second quartile, that's halftime in basketball, end of the third quarter, third quartile, end of the fourth quarter. It is the fourth quartile. We usually just call it the max. And back here at the end of the second quartile, which was halftime in the basketball game, we call that the median instead of Q2.
right? So I can break up any set of data. If I line it up from low to high, from the lowest value up to the highest value, I can break that data into four pieces. Now right in the middle, that's going to be our 50th percentile. That's like you're in a race and you beat 50 people. So you beat these 50 down here and they're still, you know, 49 above you. 49 and yourself make the 50 up here. So right in the middle is the 50th percentile. Uh, if we look at the first quarter, here's the end of the first quartile. We call this the lower quartile. We call this the upper quartile. Well, this is the 25th percentile. If I go from the lowest score to this score, that's the lowest quarter of the data. This is the 25th percentile. If you scored right here, you beat 25 of the 100 people in the room. And as we move along, this is the 50th percentile. If you scored here, you beat 50 people in the room. And if you scored here, you're in the, at the end of the third quartile, you're in the 75th percentile. You beat 75 people out of 100. All right. Okay. So next, let me just give you a little uh, easy set of data values. All right, and we'll just calculate these quartiles by hand. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 values here lined up from low, which we call minimum, all the way up to high, which we call maximum. Now, if I look at all these 12 values and I have them lined up from high to low, let's go look for the middle first, that median number. So I count my way in from the right and I count in from the left. And right here is the middle where this red line is. So if it's a tie for middle, you just add them up and divide by two. So the average of 12 and 13 is 12.5. That's the end of my second quartile. That's like halftime in the basketball game. We call that the median. Now to find the other two, I'm going to, this line right here breaks it into the lower half of the data and the upper half of the data. Well, you just take each of those halves and you break them in half again. So I want to look at this lower half of data and I want to find the middle of the lower half of data. It's kind of like you're finding the median again. You're finding the median of the bottom half. So I count in from the right and I count in from the left and I have a tie right here, but 11 plus 11 divided by two is still 11. So the end of the first quartile is the number 11. Go up to the upper half find the median of the upper half. It's a tie between 14 and 15. Average those, that's 14.5. So the value 14.5 is the end of the third quartile. All right, so given a set of data values, find the middle, the median, then find the median of the bottom half and find the median of the top half. All right, you're just kind of finding the middle three different times. Find the middle, find the middle of the bottom half, find the middle of the top half, and you have your quartiles. Okay, now I just want to go ahead and graph a box and whisker plot and see how my box and whisker for this data lines up to a fairly normal looking box and whisker plot. If your data is nice and symmetrical, your box will look you know, about the same size and your two whiskers going out on the ends will look to be about the same size if everything's nice and symmetrical. So let's see if our box and whisker for our data here winds up looking like a symmetrical box and whisker plot. First thing we need is just like a number line or think of it as a ruler just for reference so we know where to place these dots that we calculated, this 10, 11, 12.5, 14.5, and 22. I want to place them, you know, in the appropriate spot. So I need a ruler first. So I just kind of sketched a ruler here from the lowest value, 10, up to the highest value, 22. And just make it regular increments. It doesn't have to be exact. And just uh, make yourself a little ruler just for reference. All right, now that we have our reference ruler, I can start plotting dots. The first dot that I want to plot is the minimum. So that's 10. So find 10 on your ruler, drop down to the line you're going to put your dots on and draw you a dot. Let's move to the first quartile. That's 11. End of the first quartile is 11. So find 11, drop down, put a dot there. Find the median, the end of the second quartile. That's 12.5. So that's halfway between 12 and 13. Drop down. Draw a dot, 14.5 is between 14 and 15. And then finally, the max is 22. That's way out here. Drop down and put a dot. You connect those dots with a line, and you draw a box around the middle two quartiles. 
Remember, it's broken into four pieces. Here's the first piece, second piece, third piece, and the fourth piece is really long. Well, those middle two pieces, those middle two quartiles, that's what you draw the box around. And we like to draw a line down the middle here where the median is. That's the end of the second quarter. So this is the minimum, end of the first quarter, end of the second quarter, end of the third quarter, end of the fourth quarter. And once you draw your box and whisker, you can see that it doesn't look like a symmetrical box and whisker at all. See, my whiskers are not the same size. I have this one long whisker out to the right. That tells me I have an outlier. That's this guy right here. 22 is kind of an outlier. When our median number was like 12 or 13, but then we have a 22 out here, that's way out there kind of pulling our data to the right. It's kind of skewing our data to the right. So the good thing about a box and whisker plot, if you draw it, the, the length of the whiskers is kind of a clue or kind of a signal that maybe you have an outlier that is going to screw up your mean, median, and mode. Okay, on the calculator, I'm going to show you how to get your quartiles on the calculator. You just go to Stat, and I want to edit my table. I want to put these values up here in my table. So choose Edit. Now I've already cheated and put my values in the table. 10 all the way down to, whoops, too far, all the way down to 22. So I've put all my values in the table. Once you do that, you start over at Stat. You arrow to the right to Calculate. And you want option number one, one variable statistics. And it's asking which list you want to work off of. I put all my data into list one. If you want to use another list, there's list one, list two, list three in blue. That's the second function of your number buttons. But I'm fine with list one. That's where I put my data. We don't mess with frequency list and we just tell it to calculate. And there's our X bar. There's our average. There's our uh, number of values, 12. There's our standard deviation, 3.34. And if I scroll down, I have my quartiles. I have 12 values. The lowest value is 10. The highest value is 22. The middle value is 12.5. And then quartile 1 ends at 11, and quartile 3 ends at 14.5. Those are those numbers we calculated by hand up there. I do need to show you the uh, interquartile range, uh, abbreviated IQR. It's basically just the width of the box from here to here. How wide is your box? So from the quartile 1 number to the quartile 3 number. So just take quartile 3 minus quartile 1, and that tells you how wide the box is, what the range is between those two numbers. So our quartile 3 was 14.5 and our quartile 1 was 11. Subtract those two numbers. The width of the box, the interquartile range, is 3.5. And the last thing I want to do is show you how to graph this picture on the graphing calculator. It's just kind of fun. First thing I want to do is usually when we graph, I want to put something into y equals, you know, like an equation of a line or a curve, and then I tell it to graph. So that's usually how we graph stuff. But I don't want to graph a line or a curve. I want to graph a box and whisker. So let's not confuse the calculator. Let's take this out. I'm just going to hit clear. And make sure in y equals that you don't have any equations in there, you know, to confuse the calculator. Because it's going to try and put those lines or curves on our graph. We don't want them. We just want the data in our table uh, to graph. To graph the data in your table, you use stat plot, which is the second function of the y equals button. So if I go to stat plot, all right, I'm going to plot in number one here, and I need to turn it on. All right, this is my first graph. Well, it's actually my only graph. So I'm in plot one, and it's selected off. I want to go ahead and turn it on. So I'm going to go over to on and select it. So now my I always remember my dots are on because dots rhymes with plots. So if you want to plot a dot graph or a bar graph or a box and whisker plot, well, you have to tell it what type of graph you want to make from the data in your table. I like this box and whisker right here, so I'm going to arrow over to it. Oops, down to type, arrow over. I'm going to choose that box and whisker right there. All right, I don't need to mess with anything else. Yes, the data is in list one. Don't worry about the frequency. Now, I would go ahead and press graph here, but I'm not quite sure where my picture is going to land. I want it to land in this window right here. 
but it might be over here, it might be up there, over there, it might be completely off the window, it might be completely, completely off the screen. So let's go into our window and let's set it. All right, whoops, I missed something here. Um, yeah, quit, quit, quit. I'm not sure what I did there. I hit something it didn't like. So we're in here, we've selected what we want. Let's go to window, there we go. I don't know what I pressed the first time. Let's go to window and the X values are from low to high. They want your X values from minimum to maximum. And they're talking about these values right here. Your X axis goes left to right. So I'm talking about a low X of 10 up to a high X of 22. So I want my X window, my X is to go from 10 to 22. Now I stretched it a little bit just because I like to have a little extra window on the sides. So going from left to right, I'm going to go a little bit lower than 10, 9, and I'm going to go a little bit higher than 22. So I stretched it from 9 to 23. Don't worry about the scale. That's just what you're going by. We're going by 1s. And your Y value, all you need to do for your Y value that stretches it up and down is just go from 0 to 1. So set your low Y to 0 and your high Y to 1. Your Y minimum 0, Y max 1. And now you're ready to graph, and it'll take the data in your table and turn it into a nice box and whisker plot. You can see how it matches this picture right here with a really long whisker on the right. So that's what box and whisker plots are good for. You look at the whiskers and that's a signal that, hey, you've got an outlier way over here that's probably messing up your data. It's probably messing up your mean, your median, and your mode. That's basically the, the best thing I can say about box and whisker plots is it's just a visual of whether you have outliers or not messing up your data. All right, guys, that's all I got for today.